you doing? <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, I recently went back to work in the office. I'm just like you. After a couple of months at home, uh, working at home, a little little global pandemic, little globular panini, little glibby pibby. Mm. All right, no fans of the novel coronavirus in tonight. That's fine. Uh, so I go back into the office, and over the course of lockdown number six, <laughs> uh, I've grown out this long, luscious, beautiful mullet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so I go back into the office, and the reason I grew out the mallet is that I needed something to live for. Um, and by lockdown number six, I thought, you know, the prospect of emerging into summer with an inbuilt Legionnaire's cap for a haircut seemed as good a reason as any to keep drawing breath. Um, thank you. No, we did it. <laughs> Uh, so I go back into the office and my coworker Marie comes up to me in the kitchen, lovely woman Marie, and she's like, Scout! <laughs> Love that mullet! <laughs> <laughs> Love that for you! <laughs> it's brave! It's brave! <laughs> Love that mullet. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Couldn't do it, shouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, no. <laughs> Looks great on you, though. <laughs> is it for charity? Is it, is, I've heard about this mullet for mental health initiative. Are we raising money for the mentally ill with a mullet? Is that what's going on right now? We're raising a little, little money for the mentally ill with a little mullet, are we? <laughs> no, Marie. No, it's just my haircut. Um, but I think it is a pretty good personification of where my mental health is right now. We are, <laughs> we are tightly clamped down at the front, uh, break down at the back. <laughs> I don't know what's behind these ears. You think I own two mirrors? What are you, crazy? Oh, man. Uh, after that conversation, Marie actually felt quite bad, so she, um, she bought me a coffee to apologise. Um, so in a way, it was raising money for the mentally ill. She just <laughs> didn't realise. <laughs> We got now the psychos in? No? Some quite polite laughter. No one here on a fresh mental health care plan? Woo! Hell yeah. That's beautiful. We love to hear that. And I take it that everyone else who remains silent is just uh, keeping their head down and putting one foot in front of the other <laughs> until they fucking expire. And I think that's beautiful, baby. That's the Anzac spirit. <laughs> that's what this country was built on. Any veterans? No, don't. <laughs> No. Uh, shout out to anyone in the crowd tonight on our SSRIs or antidepressants as we call them in show business. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I know how difficult it is to come at all on that medication. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. Shit down there is so dry. <laughs> it's desiccated. <laughs> you can bear down and just coat a lamington with that bad boy, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh dear, you think you can get the job done with the, the tender hand of a loving lover and some lube? Absolutely not. <laughs> you think you can do it with a vibrator? No, <laughs> you can't. You simply cannot. <laughs> no, you gotta go to Bunnings. <laughs> you gotta get something industrial. And I'm not talking about Bunnings retail, I'm talking Bunnings trade. <laughs> After hours Bunnings. <laughs> the kind you need a forklift license to get into. <laughs> Like get a sander, you know, and just sort of like wear away at the flesh. Just pulverize that numb little nub you've got going down there. Just shave away, you know, like a kebab shop on a Friday night. Just <laughs> shave away until it's just numb and featureless and dry like a Ken doll. <laughs> so thanks so much for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Some applause from the people on the SSRIs in the crowd. They're like, relatable material. <laughs> I think the other thing that got me through lockdown number six uh, was I watched a documentary called Drive to Survive. Uh, yes? Yes. Hell yeah. This one's for you, ma'am. Um, so Drive to Survive is a documentary about Formula One, motorsport, and I understand I'm not the kind of person who should be into motorsport. I've carefully cultivated this persona of being a dumb, lactose intolerant uh, slut that can't drive. I understand that. That's very much what I'm working with professionally and personally. <laughs> uh, and I understand that like politically, I'm very diametrically opposed to the Formula One. You know, it's a very macho sport. It's very carbon intensive. It's probably homophobic in some respects. I'm not sure, but I'm probably, yeah. Um, but, uh, I, I, and so I understand that, but, uh, uh, when the cars go that fast, oh, they go so fast. <laughs> I 
I'm talking like 320 kilometers an hour. Like they're, they're the fastest vehicles on earth and they're these incredible, I just, whenever I watch it, I'm just overwhelmed by this like toxic male urge to just like punch through some drywall and then just like put my hand through and scoop out the little drywall bits and eat it like a little pavlova after a, after a Christmas lunch. Come on, yum. And then I just take my little crusty drywall hand, I take my dick and I jerk off to stepsister porn and then I'm just like, oh, I'm a big man, I'm a big strong man. And then I like, but I can't finish. So then I got to like fuck the hole that I've made in the drywall and then, and then I, and then I come and then I go and sit back down on the couch and I never tell my son how much he means to me. Um, so, okay, uh, that's just Formula One talking. But there's one part of Formula One uh, that I do love to hate and it's a man called Max Verstappen. Do you have an opinion on Max Verstappen? Yeah. He didn't win. You're right. I think I manifested the fact that his car crashed yesterday. (laughs) No, I can't fucking stand this little piss bitch. Um, Max Verstappen is a 23-year-old Dutch driver who is the current reigning champion of Formula One after a very controversial final Grand Prix last year. Don't ask me about it. I'm not fucking over it. Uh, And I just can't stand this man. He has the most slappable face in Formula One and he's arrogant and reckless and he drives dangerously. He nearly killed another driver last year in a crash that was his fault and he failed to admit, like, responsibility. Um, And I... I always get to this part in the set and I get very overwhelmed by my feelings towards Max Verstappen. and I can't put it in comedy. I can't hold all the feelings. Uh, so I've decided to pivot briefly uh, to the most uh, toxic male art form I'm currently aware of, which is the diss track. So I will now perform for you my Max Verstappen diss rappin' backin' trackin'. Hit it. I said, fuck Max Verstappen. Little pussy bitch, he's cracking under pressure. Now the Dutch guy sees what's happening. I said, fuck Max Verstappen. He can't get that clearance. He only won the championship through FIA interference. Look it up. I said, fuck Max Verstappen. He can't hack it out on the track. And now there goes another crash as he locks up and stacks it. Unbridled ambition, unthrottled ignition. 23 year old behind the wheel, but can't get that full position. Go out, I see him speeding Away into the first chicane And I just want him to stay I'm feeling like maybe I hate what I crave I exile the parts of myself That I don't feel safe enough to embrace I think I want to fuck Max Verstappen in his bleached Dutch I'll spread his cheeks on my dick and leave him begging for more I want to fuck Max Verstappen I want to strip him of his suit Run my hands over his body Work from bonnet to boot I want to fuck Max Verstappen Then cradle him gently Like a Pirelli soft tire compound And he'll look up contently and say Scout, I'm not everything you hate I'm everything you crave Strength, perseverance Heaps of money The ability to drive, you know like. But in spite of our differences, I think maybe we could, you know, have a little kiss. We have a little, you know, like that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. You've been, you've been uh, such a lovely crowd, and uh, it's it's so nice to be able to do comedy in Melbourne. Because uh, sometimes I worry that if I do gear like that uh, elsewhere, I will get beaten up after the show. <laughs> uh, but uh, I can see from the look of all of you, nice people, that you are all too iron deficient to fight. So, I've been Scott Buckley, thank you so much.